basically following Mary Catherine who did a great job of showing you why this is so important, why it's great to have the Troys out there pouring out the bottles of Yellowtail, why social media is critical to responding to the misinformation and the uh, confusion that is out there. I'm going to tell you why it's the perfect avenue to share the positive story about agriculture and what farmers and ranchers do every day. And I have a few great examples to share with you. But first, I know that some of you, it, it might be hard to convince you that social media is worth your time, that it might be a passing fad. And I think from conversations throughout the past day and a half, you've found that it really, really is here to stay. But, you know, it, you might think that you don't want to hear about what everyone ate for lunch. You don't care if somebody stopped by to get a hamburger. You don't, you might have tried it and you thought that it didn't increase your sales. You tried a short-term marketing campaign and it didn't really pay off like you hoped it would. And you might just say to yourself, you know, I'm not tech savvy. I do email, but I don't want to go anywhere further. But I'm here to tell you that if you can do email, you can send a tweet. And this is why it's so important. 60% of Facebookers are over the age of 25. It's not just teenagers talking about going to the mall. It's parents, it's people that go to grocery shopping every day and make decisions that influence every one of us. It's people that discuss antibiotics on chat rooms and discussion boards and really need the facts. 75% of Americans, and this is a new study that just came out in February, um, admit that they get news forwarded to them either through their email or through social media and they are active in sharing it on their pages. 75%, that's a great new route of sharing information. And this, this data is really new. Twitter gets 300,000 new users every day. It's been something like a 300 or 400% growth over the last year. And these, uh, I, just to reiterate, these aren't just teenagers, these are every one of us. And I've found that there are a growing percentage of them that are farmers. We've, we've talked about HSUS a lot over the past day, but I think that this example really hits home the power of social media when it's used against us. And in this case, this was a campaign that HSUS ran for only one month, for 30 days in December, they used this image of this horribly disfigured dog to raise $1.2 million, only using email campaigns and um, using Facebook and Twitter to rally their fans and donate. And that's a powerful image, but just think, $1.2 million for, from tweets and a few Facebook posts? And it wasn't even their dog. That, I know, that's the worst part. But a picture really is worth a thousand words. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right up, I don't think of myself as a social media expert or a social media guru, but I don't really think that even exists because these tools are so new. I think everybody should explore them and try them for themselves. There's no wrong way to get involved. And here's some of the things that I've picked up while working on the Alliance's Twitter and Facebook accounts over the past year. First of all, does that look like a happy cow to you? This is from a, this is from a farmer in California, and he shared this photo with cow, how they use these back scratchers, they're comfortable. This is what life on his farm looks like. And this particular farmer had about 4,000 followers um, from all around his community, so this is an image that they were able to see quickly. This just shows farm life, the very essence of food production, and so few people see this. So few people get the chance to see um, what this represents and just how beautiful farming really can be. This is taken from the cab of a tractor. I think he was planting, and you know, it does get a little boring out there in the tractor, so why not share what you're doing? Why not tweet about what you're planting? Why not share what steps you take to make sure your food supply is safe and nutritious and affordable? And also, you know, it connects you. So many farmers are out in the fields. Geographically, it's hard for them to communicate. This is such an amazing tool for that. 
And this, going back to Ohio's issue two, this image was uploaded by someone who was pro-issue two, but you can see just the power of that image and the support there and the rallying for our farmers. Um, I thought that was great. And this example, um, on the homepage of Twitter, for those of you that aren't plugged in yet, there's trending topics that are the most popular items of the day. And back in August 2009, when swine flu and H1N1 was really scaring a lot of the public, a few farmers got together and decided that they were going to get oink to be a top term that everybody on Twitter was talking about. And they succeeded with that. And more than just having oink trending, they included facts about H1N1, facts about um, why the, f the pork supply was safe. And it's just such an innovative way. And it was so much more than just the original farmers that got involved. It was people that probably had no idea about H1N1 at all, but they were able to see this and learn. And when you think about 50 million tweets every day and Oink made the top 10, I think that's pretty cool. Sometimes the video can be even better. <laughs> that got 17,000 views. And how easy was that? You know, he's still traveling along, but he's educating people. And I just, I can't get enough of that. How many of you are a Farmville farmer? Do we have any Farmville farmers in the house? Admit to it. I know there's a few of you out there. Farmville is a very popular Facebook game has about 75 million virtual farmers who log in every day to tend to their virtual animals and their virtual crops. Well, it's really taken off in the past year, and so one of the things we put together for the Animal Ag Alliance was a little response, because in Farmville, things are just a little bit different than real farms. So I'd like to show you a quick uh, example of how easy it can be to connect social media to real-world farming. Um, just educated with simple, straightforward sound bites that everyone could understand. Another thing we've done is um, be pretty active on Facebook, and so sometimes we'll just ask, leave open blank questions, like I would like to thank a farmer and rancher today for, and you can see that people really are thankful for what farmers provide. You just have to give them the chance to provide feedback and connect with you. Because that's what social media is all about. People love talking and love connecting and love talking about themselves and love talking about what they like. And it turns out that a lot of the time, they really do like farming. They just want to get the chance to express that. This was a great example of, like Mary Catherine was talking about, connecting with bloggers. Um, she was invited uh, by someone on Twitter. They connected via that way. and was invited to come out to a farm and after visiting the farm beforehand she had only experienced the Michael Pollan version of agriculture but afterwards she posted multiple lengthy um, blogs about wow I had no idea farmers cared so much and isn't that what it's all about to put a face on the farmer to show that farmers are people too and I just think that this was really telling so in conclusion I know some people probably feel like this, <laughs> that I'm, I don't want to go there, I'm not ready. But I just think that there's so many, so many reasons to get involved in social media. The question isn't why social media, it's why not. And I would like to congratulate those of you that are already very active. I know we've got quite a few great tweeters, great sharers of information, great advocates for agriculture in the room, and I really appreciate what you do. So please let me know if I can help in any way, and thanks so much.